This week we've got Avengers number two. Uh, I thought uh, this is the series, one of the series I was looking forward to most, written by Jonathan Hickman with art by uh, Jerome Opeña. And um, number two is a lot, it's even better than number one. Like I thought it started out pretty good, pretty solid, but uh, number two, he, Hickman just really starts developing it, introducing all the new characters, uh, new and old characters, um, new to the Avengers. Some of the characters uh, were former X-Men that I was happy to see. There was some random characters I didn't know who they were. And um, I don't know if that means they're completely new or just like really random uh, Marvel people that I didn't know of. And then you have some like, uh, you know, standby Avengers who you would expect to be in there. Anyway, it's a really good mix. I also like Hickman's uh, developing the villains a little bit more. And it just seems like uh, it's off to what I really hope is going to be an epic run, so uh, really glad to see Avengers number two come out. Uh, one of my other favorite uh, Marvel Now books out now, as you know it because I keep talking about it, is Thor, God of Thunder, written by Jason Aaron with art by Asad Ribic, and that just continues the really um, dark, gritty uh, storyline that uh, Jason Aaron's writing with the God Butcher. I would actually think the villain should be named the God Butcherer, but I guess that's just, you know, me being picky. Um, Thor and Avengers are definitely my favorite two Marvel Now series. Uh, also coming out, uh, all new X-Men number, what is this, three, right? Oh, jeez, number four uh, by Bendis and uh, Stuart Immelman. And um, I think I said last week, or last month, or that number three was sort of a disappointment, but number four picks it up again. Uh, has some really great interaction with uh, Cyclops as he confronts his old self and all his, uh, you know, the whole original X-Men when they were much younger. And Jean Grey, uh, who, you know, his love, who is no longer alive in the Marvel Universe. So, and this is really good at the, with the character interactions, and you get a lot of that in here, which is good. You also get a little bit of uh, some of the new mutants they've discovered. Um, and I guess we're actually trying to develop them as characters. I thought they were just kind of, you know, uh, showing up once per issue. Like, oh, here's a new mutant we found. But maybe he's trying to do something with them and we'll see where that goes. But overall, pretty strong. So I was glad to see um, a good return to form with this issue. Uh, also recommendable. Uh, Avenger, or excuse me, A plus X, number three, which is like a Marvel team up basically where they take uh, just, you know, one off stories with one Avenger and one X-Men. And as you can see, this one has Storm and Black Panther. Uh, you know, I'm, especially as a minority, I'm really glad to see, you know, anytime they get some, um, when they feature these two characters. So it's great to see them together again. and. Uh, them touching on their relationship. Uh, that's actually, their story is actually written by Jason Aaron, so that's good. And then uh, you also have, uh, the second story is uh, Hawkeye and Gambit. Um, you know, two roguishly charming guys teaming up, uh, fighting over a girl they're trying to rescue, so that's fun. Uh, so that makes number two and number three of eight plus X that I really liked. And number one was the one that I thought was not so good, so. I don't know, two out of three, maybe they're on a roll there. Uh, last week, when I didn't review books, I missed the uh, debut of two new Marvel Now books, and this week we don't have any new Marvel Now books. But um, last week was uh, Avengers Arena number one and Cable and X-Force number one. Uh, and I don't know how, but this week we've got number two of each of those coming out. So here's the cover number two of Avengers Arena. And as you can see, they wear their um, influences on their uh, sleeve, as they say, uh, with the Lord of the Rings homage there. Um, I like the concept of this book, but it takes a bunch of characters and, I don't know, are you really going to kill them all off until there's only one? Um, in the first issue, they did kill a character. Uh, a character I liked um, from Avengers Academy, which I guess this is, you know, if you've been following Avengers Academy, this is sort of what they want you to be reading now um, in the Marvel Now universe, but it's like you're seeing characters that you like, you know, probably getting killed. I don't know if that's what I want, but um, 
I guess if I put sort of the sentimental angle aside, the story itself is good. In number two, they develop, uh, the, they spend a lot of time talking about this one character, Death Locket, who's like a girl, little girl Deathlock. It, it's a cool character and she, you know, I guess, it's this guy's name, Hopeless, the writer. It does make you feel for her, but just sort of not cool with where this book is going. Um, I don't know. I don't want to see all those guys die, but it, story-wise, it seems pretty good so far. We'll see. Uh, Cable and X-Force. Um, I like a couple of the characters. Cable, Domino. Um, I don't know who Dr. Nemesis is. He looks pretty ridiculous. There's Colossus, who actually gets to do something in this issue. Not a ton. Uh, and Forge. It's just a really weird team. Uh, also written by Hopeless, actually, with art by Salvador La LaRocca, which, you know, I really like his stuff. It's great to see him still doing Marvel. Um, but I just don't know, I don't know what the concept of this book is, so... I, usually I don't let the whole... My friend would used to always talk about how if a book doesn't have a concept, it just, he doesn't get it. And I said, it doesn't always need a concept, but I don't know, maybe, maybe in this case it does, so... Cable and X-Force after two issues, I don't know where that's going. Even more Marvel Now books. Uh, something I realized uh, reading these next couple is that um, if you just sort of take away the fact that they're supposed to be Marvel books and sort of treat them like uh, kind of cool creators just doing weird concepts with superheroes, it, they're a lot more enjoyable. For example, X-Men Legacy. This is the third issue. and um, I'm really starting to actually like this book a lot, especially if I sort of divorce myself from the idea that it has to tie into the X-Men universe, because the story is pretty cool, and, you know, the X-Men actually do, they're on his trail, Wolverine and those guys, and they show up near the end, but, um, and I'm, I will be glad to see it tie in, but if you just separate it from that and take it as its own story talking about David, uh, Legion, and how nutty he is, it, it's actually pretty fun. I mean, it's really crazy. Um, and like I said, kind of like a Strange Tales uh, when they put all those indie creators on um, the Marvel stuff. It's just kind of out of the ordinary and, you know, interesting. So for that reason, I like it. And in the same vein, uh, FF, written by Matt Faction with art by uh, Mike Allred, it's for the same thing. I mean, you don't really need to know what's going on with uh, the rest of the Marvel Universe to sort of enjoy this. It's sort of, I don't know, I, I guess I could compare it a little bit to x Statics, but without the kind of political things that Milligan was trying to, like big points he was trying to make. This is just sort of weird fun. I don't know. And, and there is some, you know, decent character moments with uh, Johnny Storm's girlfriend kind of realizing what the heck is she doing there, and I was wondering the same thing. So. I don't know, not to mention you gotta love All Red's Arm, so hey, this is also recommendable. Uh, we also have Indestructible Hulk number two, which I said when the first one came out was really good. Uh, it's written by Mark Wade with art by uh, Lionel Francis Yu, and um, it's still strong. It's got an appearance, as you can see by the cover here, uh, appearance with uh, Iron Man, and sort of banner kind of... Um, treating him like a rival and things like this. So it, it's not really the strongest issue, but it does show those two um, comparing the two of them. So I'm still looking forward to it, but it was just not a lot of forward plot development, let's say. Uh, man, there's still a few more. Uh, Thunderbolts number two. Uh, I don't know about this book. Like I said last time, the creative team is just kind of weird. Um, even though the characters are like all fan favorites who I think everybody would want to see in the team book. But I just don't know about the creative team. I do like Dylan. Uh, uh, oh, okay, finally the last Marvel Now book. Jeez. Uh, Captain America, again, I guess this is sort of like, like, like I was saying, if you take Marvel superheroes out of the Marvel Universe, like here you have Captain America in a sci-fi book. And that just, doesn't work for me, at least not so far. Uh, I do love Romita, John Romita Jr.'s art, although his uh, grizzled, bearded Captain America looks a lot like Thor in the beginning. So, I don't know. Uh, 
if you've got a limited budget, Captain America is not, is one of the books that is not making my cut, probably. Uh, but I, something I will always spend money on, uh, Hawkeye, uh, kind of has nothing to do with the rest of the Marvel Now universe. Uh, it's just a great, not independent book, but you know, uh, on its own kind of continuity. Not continuity, but it's not tied into anything else. David Aha's art, he's back on this issue after uh, two, a two arc, where, two arc issue where he was not. Anyway, this is one of Marvel's best books. Uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, very strong stuff. And last for Marvel, uh, and the last issue of Uncanny X-Force, written by Rick Remender, with art by, I think it's Jerome Opinia, right? It's gotta be. Oh, excuse me, it's not. With art by Phil Noto. But uh, anyway, this is the very final issue of X-Force, and he kind of wraps up a lot of plot points that he'd been going through with the characters and resolving them, or as much resolution as you can get. Um, very strong final issue. Um, and I think Uncanny X-Force is one of the best books Marvel has put out in years. So you gotta check it out. I mean, not with this final issue, but go get those trades, because it's great. And hopefully Remender can do equally great stuff with uh, all the new Marvel Now books that they've put along. So that's it for Marvel.